What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of History Hyenas. I'm Chris Stefano, a.k.a. Chrissy Conniptions. With me, as always, Giannis Pappas, a.k.a. Yanni Karate. A.k.a. Yanni the Swarthy. Yanni the Swarthy Ethnic. I got a sinus infection and I got an ear infection because I'm a five-year-old kid. I got a low-grade fever. It's just one of those days I don't want to be here. Yeah, you. Do. he's not exaggerating. He has an ear infection. It's pretty bad. It's it. Listen, listen let me just explain to go you. Go ahead, go ahead. You, you, you got a daughter. Kids gather a lot of germs. They accumulate a lot of germs. And let's be honest, your daughter goes to school in Bay Ridge. She goes to school with people from a lot of other countries that have different traditions and cuisines. Yeah. And you're going to be exposed to a few bacteria and virus yeah. that are not local to the New York City yeah. area. Let's, let me just say it this way. She goes to school with a lot of kids from the Eastern Hemisphere. <laughs> Eastern so, Hemis. Yeah, the East, a bunch of Eastern Hemis. Give me a way shot. Give me a way shot. You don't need it. I don't think you need it. I think you're correct there. I think ISIS's ruling was correct. Okay. Because I think that's as PC as you can get. Yeah. Referring to the hemisphere from which people emanate. Yeah. That, yeah. that they have dirty feet and they give ear infections. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried. You know what? I was trying to contain you, and then you just spilled out fucking like the lead alien from goddamn Men in Black. Did we give away Sean Sheehan? I the can't hear. The fucking racism cockroaches spilled out again. Where's Young Sheehan? What okay, happened? Did you get, yeah, okay. Trying to fix the button? Okay, yeah, thank you. Give me away, Sean Sheehan. I can't hear out of my left ear. Now, let me tell you something, okay? I just L want to say if we need something fixed, ISIS is the wrong type of swarthy to have that fixed. Yeah, you don't want that kind of swarthy <laughs> no. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You want South Asian. You don't want Arabic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I went to the doctor. Here's the thing. Okay. I used to be I used to be a hypochondriac. I really did. I used to worry about everything, Google everything. And now when I think back to that Or again, like your friends in Ridgers call it. Your friends from Ridgewood call it. Being a faggot. Being a faggot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I used to just I used to do that. And um now, you know, because of CBD oil, because of no religion, because of just growing up, because of realizing the narcissism. Don't forget about salmon. Don't forget about salmon. Salmon, omega-3 pills, because yeah. of realizing the narcissism and constantly worrying about yourself and energy and all that stuff. I really am not a hypochondriac anymore. But on Saturday night, I bent down to pick up my notes at the comedy cellar and all the fluid that was stuck in my sinus cavity went into my ear and cuzzies, wuzzies, cuzzies and cuzettes, chicken cuzlets of the matriarchy, you toots, non-toots, whoever's listening for free or is a valid member of the matriarchy, the pain in my left ear was wild. It was fucking wild to the point where I had to go to the doctor and I had a nice Russian doctor today at City MD on 4th Avenue in Bay Ridge. I went to City MD. Thank you to the people over there. And she came in and she said, you're acting like baby. Yeah. Before she said, she said, you're acting like baby. You grown man. You don't have ear infection. Okay. It's little pain. She you said, have a vagina. Yeah. She said, you have a vagina. She said, but I'm going to take a look. And she took a look in the right ear and she says, it's just a little lead. I said, well, it's actually the left ear that hurts. She goes, okay, we're going to look at that one, but I'm telling you it's okay. And she looked in the left ear and she said, oh, baby. She said, this, 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 no good. This going to hurt. I said, I felt fluid come out of the ear. This morning when I woke up, she said, yeah, your ear is crying. Wow. That's what she said. She said, your ear crying. She yeah. goes, oh. And then she said, "Um, she said, I hope you don't have to fly this week. I said, I have to fly on Thursday. She said, oh, boy. <laughs> she said, she. I've never had a doctor say that. She said, look, she said, I'm going to give you amoxicillin, mm. antibiotic to treat the infection. Mm. So I'm going to give you X-strength ibuprofen. And she prescribed me a sleeping pill. Mm -hmm. She's like, because the, the, the pain in your ear potentially, she, I swear, this is a Russian doctor. She said, the pain in your ear may be indescribable when you're landing. Wow. Because the pressure builds up so much that it hurts people who have no ear infection. Imagine having an ear infection. She said, so I'm just going to try to put you to sleep 
for the flight. Yeah, and that coming from a Russian woman, you're going to have to believe her because make no mistake, those people have a high pain threshold. Yes, they do. And they just I- come from a country where millions and millions of people always seem to die. Yeah. You ever notice that when you read about anything yes. in history about Russia, there's always some footnote footnote about the amount of people died, and yes. it's always in the millions. Always in the millions. So she told me that it's going to be a lot of pain, and my ear is just clogged. It's just legit clogged. Mike told me, Mike said that he had an ear infection when he Mike was who? an adult, and it just stuck. Mikey over here. Oh, Mikey emoji face. Mikey emoji face. Can you go with that one? Is that one okay? Left-sided Mike. Mikey yeah. San Antonio. Yeah. Or we call him Mikey, Mikey, Mikey over the border. Mikey yeah. over the wall. <laughs> yeah. Humpty Dumpty. Mikey yeah. on the wall. Mikey catapults. <laughs> yeah, Mikey catapults. Mikey White Walker. Mikey kind of balding. Yeah. <laughs> Very balding. But not all the way yet. Mikey scurrying around. Mikey YouTubes. Yeah. Mikey's running our YouTubes. Mikey That's his YouTube. name. Mikey YouTubes. I picture Mikey scurrying around, too, like if he was working in a king's court. Yeah. He would just be scurrying around and his fat would be juggling all over where he's trying to carry drinks to people. It's just what it is. Yeah. And I'm really I'm proud to say that the last three episodes that we've put out on this podcast have been great episodes. And I know that because Mikey has been awake the entirety of them. Yes. He used to fall asleep during our episodes, but now he's losing a few LBs. Yeah. And he's just... Uh, we're just putting out good content. If you want to hear the best content that we have, you got to go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys and stop being a fucking toot. Yes. You also have to understand that our podcast is brought to you by a healthy smile family and cosmetic dentistry out there in Rock Hill, South Carolina. State of the art practice with next generation gaming for kids and adults. Because if you want to get your teeth cleaned, just take a trip down to South Carolina and see our good friend, our great friend, our amazing friend, Harvey Spencer Jr., the black dentist. The black dentist. Make no mistake, yeah, Harvey man. Spencer Jr. will crack open your teeth and clean them out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, what he. That's what Doctor Harvey Spencer Jr. does on a daily basis. Is he takes people's teeth and he cracks them open and cleans them out. Yeah. Go to a healthy happy smile dot com. Yeah. Make your fucking appointment. It's fun. Relax. Dental care. You'll love our first sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's read our second sponsor. That Sandy that lives in Berlin. <laughs> Wei Song <laughs> Oh God! Oh God! Because you're trying to get him to cancel his sponsorship. No, we got to read his too. Yeah. Every month, do you have his? I don't have his. Well, What's we, his I'll, podcast again? Do we remember his podcast? Yeah. Just, He'll pull. Yeah, it up. let's. We're gonna pull out his podcast because we'll get you. We'll get you, uh, Vizmuth. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Sandra D. Can you fucking please just say Sandra D? Sandra D. Please say Sandra D. Sandra D. And also. Just real, yeah. I like this. What we're gonna do now? Let's read the sponsor first and just get the plugs out of the way. Go to I got I got a lot of shows coming up, and you just have to go to christycomedy.com. I got a theater gig April twenty fifth in Norwalk, Connecticut, the Wall Street Theater. Just come. Then I got Laugh Boston April twenty sixth, twenty seventh, and then I got Portland, Maine Empire Theater April twenty eighth. So please just come. And then I got June twenty fourth, twenty fifth Soho Theater in London. Yeah, and if you do, if you don't want to go to the show or if the shows are sold out, which they should be, you can always go to whatever local boxing gym is in that area, and you will see Chris with Sergio Chicone throwing hands. Yeah, or you can go to your local city MD, and I'll be in there because I have a sinus infection, something like that. What are your dates, Giannis? Because I got this weekend. Uh, you, for the people hearing this on Thursday, to my Patreon peoples, to the matriarchy. To the matriarchy, I'll be at Levity Live Comedy Theater. It is a beautiful club in Absolutely. West Nyack in the Palisades Mall, West Nyack, New York, from March 22nd to the 24th. If you can't make that, or if you're a fucking Long Island Jew, if you're a Long Island Jew, or if you're a Spataducci Italian whose family retreated to on the island because you want to escape the influx of minorities... I will be in Levittown, Long Island at Governor's Comedy Club. Yeah, that's a nice comedy that's club. That's the next one. That's that's uh, April 2nd and 3rd. That's nice. So the first week in April, if you're in Long Island and you got the bagel face, come see, <laughs> come see me in Levittown, Long Island. Bagel face is a 10. I will be performing in the part of Long Island that Lynn dreamed that Chrissy would be living as a physical therapist with many Filipino friends. If you make it to Levittown, Long Island from Ridgewood, Queens, yeah. then you just fuck, you're in the Hall of Fame. Because you did just as good by moving to Bay Ridge. Yeah. And having one uh, friend from Park Slope. It's got to be by the Bay or have Ridge in the name. Yeah. 
that you have one friend that your friends from home refer to as a faggot is this victory for Lynn and Eileen. Yeah. 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 Because make no mistake, your friends have said, are you hanging out with that comedy faggot friend of yours? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the libtard from Park Slope. And yeah. you said, oh, you mean Giannis fucking one eyes? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then after that, I will be in Point Pleasant, New Jersey on April 12th. In the 13th? Yeah. I will, did I just say I'll be on on point? I'll be in Point Pleasant, New Jersey at Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club. Who pays in straight cash. So if you want to rob Giannis, that's the time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> also, Governor's pays in yeah. cash. Yeah, I feel like one of my friends one of my friends from home sent out this tweet the other day, and I feel like it was talking about Giannis. He said, shout out to all of the Irish people whose families were enslaved, came to the U.S. for a better life, worked in factories, and then got called privileged and blamed for slavery by beta male soy drinking hypocrites and depressed feminists. And I said that, I, sorry, that does, that's not about Giannis. I sent that to Giannis to show, to just show Giannis just what kind of Ridgewood kids, how they feel. It's just what it is at that point, right? It's just what it is, yeah. Um, Real quickly, just because I said, uh, you know, we had, I, I wanted to read our second sponsor, and, and this will be more fluid, more gender fluid next week. Um, it's from Vidora Rajapakska. So, Vidora Rajapakska and Dr. Lee Harvey Oswald are, are Dr. I mean, Dr. Harvey Spencer. Yeah. Are, are, both are hundred dollar members. So with the hundred dollar membership, if you went to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys, every single week we promote your business. So it's been going great. Vidora Rajpaka, he's got uh Vidora Rajpaka, that's R-A-J-A-P-A-K-S-A dot com. And Vidora Rajpakska, the same name, V-I-D-U-R-A-R-A-J-A-P-A-K-S-A on all social medias. That's his Instagram, that's his Twitter, that's everything. He's got the Anything Goes podcast, which can be found through the link of the website or his homepage at podcast.vidorarajapaska.com. So that's, and he's, a, listen, he's a Sri Lankan comic. He's based in Berlin. He hosts the Anything Goes podcast, which, which I just mentioned. He's pretty much just sitting down and talking shit about comedy culture and current events with different artists, mostly comics from around the city. He's going to be going on his first tour over the summer, starting in June, exclusively around Europe. So if you're in that region, go through. I'll tell you what, when I'm in London, June 24th and 25th at the Soho Theater, I'm going to go check out Vidura. So if you're listening to Vidura, come hang out. You can open for me if, if you're around. If you're in the London area, you can work with me if you want to. I don't even know if you want to. You probably sell more tickets than I do because make no mistake, you're a Sandra D, and that's what the industry wants right now. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, when you're a Sandra D, that music just plays. That ISIS is on point. ISIS is the best. Yeah. So. Because you just had that cute up for what he said, Sandra D. Yeah, again. I was waiting for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Because that was a great plug. Uh, those are our small business sponsor. Which yeah. Um, and those, those, those check out. Yeah, check them out. Make no mistake, we're we're listen. Screwed in fucking kids. We're screwed in fucking kids. I mean, Yanni is as screwed in as it can be. I mean, he's he his basically his hair his hair just is growing slowly into a yarmulke. Yeah. It's just grow he's just got a fucking full yarmulke. I had I, to upgrade Jew. Yeah. I upgraded my duties and I recircumcised myself last night. I just cut another layer of skin off my penis just to get more Jew. And we're just screwed in. And when we're screwed in, that means you guys are screwed in. So if you got a small business and you want to promote it, then you promote it here on the History Hyenas podcast. Go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Now, today's topic, because we're all about history, we're all about being fucking wild. We're going to talk about Spartacus, who's a cute kid. Um, he was a cute fucking Roman gladiator slave. Um, and he started a slave uprising that could only be compared to you know, basically Spartacus, I feel like Spartacus, he, Jussie Smollett should play Spartacus in the next, right? Don't you think Jussie Smollett would be a nice Spartacus? Why would you pull that out? Just because I just feel like Jussie Smollett want to start an uprising. <laughs> and he failed. And he failed. I Although think, Spartacus didn't fail. Yeah, I think Jussie Smollett wanted, was looking to just... Big himself up. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's kind of Jesse Smollett's one of the funniest things that's happened. So in we're going to do a hit, we're going to do an episode fully on Jesse Smollett. Yeah, and if you, it's a stupid name, Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. What did you? Also, if you're looking for comedy, you got to go to Kyle Dunnigan's Instagram page. Yes, at Kyle Dunnigan because he did a spoof on the Jesse Smollett uh, hoax crime, and it's a ten. Yeah, where he pretends he got kidnapped by people. 
and uh, by jihadists, and yeah. they're, they're threatening to blow his asshole up <laughs> if he doesn't say horrible things about girls who rejected him. And it's just a tad when he goes, we're gonna, and he he pretends to be the people who have kidnapped him. Goes, we're gonna blow your asshole up. Fuck it. He's like, okay, I'll say it. I'll say it. J- Jennifer, whatever, has a smelly vagina. Yeah, yeah it's funny stuff. So go check that out. Um, so Spartacus, Spartacus. I think the scope of the rebellion that he led, yeah, is unparalleled. Well, first, okay. I so mean, he, we're talking about thousands of followers he had. Yeah, he lived. He had a big Twitter. The kid, if the kid was alive today, he would sell tickets. Hundred percent, he would have sold. He would have got some people behind him. Yeah. for his movement. He's like a mini fucking Ocasio Cortez. Yeah, that's he what is. he did. He's like that's who should play him in the next movie, Ocasio Cortez. <laughs> yeah, which by the way, let's be honest, I like Ocasio Cortez. Yeah, she's not smoking hot. She's just hot enough for. She's just hot enough because she's a fucking. Pop, 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 she's pop. not a piece. Yeah, when she's, she's not a piece to you because she has no tats on her titties. But when she starts fucking talking like smart, I just pull out the peace guns and I shoot them at the TV. It's what it is. Yeah. Um. So Spartacus, she like doesn't a, have a filtered Instagram portfolio. Yeah. You like a good filtered Instagram portfolio. Yeah, I like you that like a lot. Good, you like bunny ears and a nice haze. Yeah. You like a girl who really knows how to throw some filters on. Listen, if you're a girl on Instagram and you don't have at least one picture with your ass on a stationary bike, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you got you to gotta be doing, you got to at least be on a stationary bike. Yeah. So Spartacus 100 lived about 100 years before Christ, and he was born in modern-day Bulgaria. And what happened is the Roman armies came through Europe, as they always did, as they were just fucking... Con- Italians just used to conquer. Italians are conquering kids. Back then, yeah, they were they spreading. Would, they just spread. He was back then, that area that's now Bulgaria was called Thrace. That's Thrace. where he's from. T-H-A-R-A-C-E. Yeah, so it's modern-day Bulgaria. So basically, the Romans came in, and they were like, listen, we're, we're fucking... They're Italian kids. We're a couple of Italian kids. They said, listen, cuz. Yeah. They said, listen, we see... The reason why I'm going to take over this place is because we realize there's not too many Mulian here. <laughs> Cause if you don't give me a way shot Xi'an immediately, can you pl- we can't. Look, we're not going to be able to do this podcast without the way Shang Xi'an But yeah, you have so to. So is it. it fixed, ISIS? Yeah. It's fixed, it's fixed. So that's basically what they said. Because- okay. Do we have a word for ISIS to spell before we continue? Yeah. All right, real quick. Mush, yeah, gonna- pick a word. We're doing ISIS. Pick any word. We're going to just do it randomly at every podcast. All yeah. right. I- ISIS, get ready to spell this word. You ready? Gotcha. Don't Google either. Don't Google it right now. Get ready to spell. And I'm, you can't look at your fingers either. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, because he's, yeah. he's got the alphabet. Okay, you ready yeah. for it? Do it. Beautiful. B-E-A-U-T-I-F-U-L. All right. All right, he got it. one. Yeah. All right, good, good, good. All right, that's we'll, good. We'll come at him we'll, at random moments. Yeah, yeah. random moments right up. So the Romans came in, the Italian kids came in and said, look, we're in Bulgaria right now. We're going to fucking take this shit over. We're going to take you, Spartacus. We're going to take your fucking wife. Yeah. Um, both of you are just fucking slave toots to us. Yeah. You're just a couple of fucking slaved out toots. Yeah. We genuinely don't care about you or your wife. You're just your pieces of garbage to yeah. us. You're fucking toots. So we want we need you to fight in our army as a Roman soldier. We need you to fight. Yeah. And then you're gonna fight the you're gonna fight your own people because we you're our slave now. You're gonna yeah. fight our own people. Spartacus didn't want to do it, so he ran away. He deserted from the army. Yeah. The penalty for desertion back then was you got enslaved. And then if you were certain guys who looked like Spartacus, jacked out fucking cute kids who were ripped up, they would be put into glad into the they would be sent to gladiator schools. Basically, the movie Gladiator is inspired by Spartacus. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. So, so um, uh, Spartacus gets put in a gladiator school, and um, it's around seventy three B C where he's like, "Fuck this! I'm not I'm not doing this. I do not want to do this." And he ra- I think it was I forgot exactly the city he was in, but he raided a kitchen. Him and about twenty. Other gladiators, 30 other gladiators raided a kitchen and got kitchen utensils yeah. and basically beat the Roman army, that the Roman platoon or whatever that was watching them, yeah. and they escaped into the hills. They basically, yeah, they started the slave rebellion with steak knives. With steak knives. Yeah. Yeah. So. And forks and shit. Yeah. So then now they're in the hills. And don't forget, a lot of times, because the Roman army, yeah. even though they were very mighty and fucking wild... A lot of time they were fighting real world wars. Yeah. They were fighting in Syria. They were fighting in France. They were fighting in Germany. They're, these motherfuckers are trying to conquer. Yeah. So a lot of times the soldiers who were um, guarding these uh, 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 gladiator encampments were not very well trained soldiers. They were like weekend warrior soldiers. It was yeah. like being in the National Guard, which yeah. is it's it's honorable, but you're not like a professional soldier. Yeah. So 
But these gladiators are professional killers. Yeah. Hand-to-hand combat, legit professional killers. So Spartacus and his little army start to defeat Roman platoon after Roman platoon, and his army keeps growing and growing and growing. Goes from I think starts at like twenty or thirty. At one point, it's up to like ten thousand. I mean, it's still yeah, it's wild. Yeah, and it's interesting to note that there's three Roman slave rebellions that are known about. Yeah. Two of them happened in Sicily, which right. is a province of the Roman Empire. This was yeah. the only one that's recorded that happened on the mainland of Italy. Italy. Yeah. Yeah, and and um. Uh, yeah, because the thing is, you know, here's the truth. Slaves, you would look, you knew most likely you're going to die in slavery. You're going to die. You're going to die a gladiator. You're just going to get killed. I mean, you were just kid. Listen, here's 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 two undeniable truths mm -hmm. about being a gladiator in that time period. Every single gladiator had fumes. They all had fumes. There's no way Spartacus didn't have fumes because, I mean, you're just fighting in the summers of Italy and you're not allowed. To oh, you mean literal fumes? Actual fumes. Wow. Yeah. 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 They, they had some fucking oil and vinegar, f fucking fumed out balls. Yeah, there's no question about that. And you were going to die. Yeah. You just weren't going to, you're going to die a slave or die a gladiator. Yeah. One I mean, or the other. And there's like really, there's not a lot of clean water. You're bathing, you know, it's not yeah. like, they don't they don't have advanced, advanced, no. you know, uh, sanitation c c system. So you're, you know. There's no removable shower heads in ancient Rome, so your crotch is going to have a little kick to it. It's going to have a little kick. Yeah. So, um, Spartac here's a here's a f little fucking fact I learned. He had a cute butt. He had a cute little butt. Well, every actor that they that they portray to play Spartac is always a cute kid that I'd like to fucking throw their cocks around in my mouth a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe clear up this ear infection. Yeah. So one quick thing I learned. Can we and, do one episode without you referring to putting uh, someone's cock in your mouth? It's not gonna happen. That's why I always get sore throats. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, with Spartacus, one thing that I learned is because he they you know he kept. I think they eventually won nine victories against the all the Roman armies, which is nuts. I mean, this is fucking ragtag slaves beating the Roman army. After like the fifth victory. The Roman emperor at the time, I forgot who it was. I think it was, Cra maybe it was Crassus. 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 Yeah. He instituted, he started penalizing. He was so fucking pissed that this was happening. He instituted, he instituted decimation. Do you know where decimation is? Tell like, us. Like the word decimate, how, you know, people say, oh, that team got decimated or city's decimated. So it originated there. Decim well, it didn't originate there. It was an ancient Roman practice that was gone for centuries because it was inhumane. It was brutal, but it he brought it back. It became an expression because of this. Decimation, what it was, is every time the Roman army would be uh, disciplined, every time they'd lose, every, they would line up a whole legion of soldiers, 100, 200, 300 soldiers, and every 10th soldier would be killed mm. by his own soldiers would be beaten to death and stabbed to death. It doesn't matter. You could have been, you could, and it was rat random, you were standing there. You Fuck. could have been, the, you could have saved the battle. You could yeah. have saved, you were getting murdered by your own people every 10th, so it gave incentive. Hey, I don't want to be that 10th. I don't want to have to kill my own brother yeah. here, so that's where the term decimation came from. It, that is it, the most brutal game of eeny, meeny, miny, mo I've yeah. ever fucking heard. Yeah, and just real quick, just talking about, we'll do an episode about it, but just, I learned a little bit too, it has nothing to do with Spartacus, but just a quick little thing. While it's in the top of my brain, I got to get out of my mouth. It's stuck in my ear canal. The Quinn Dynasty, Q U I N, which was also, it was like 1600 BC. Their emperor, if you fucked up, if yeah. you fucked up, if you killed somebody, yeah. if you stole something, yeah. if you banged out somebody's wife, mm -hmm. if you did something you were not supposed to do, the, you received the penalty. So if you murdered someone, you would be killed. Then also three generations of your family. Your pops would be killed, your kid would be killed, and maybe they'd kill your wife. If you stole something, they'd cut your hands off, your mother or father's hands, and your kid's hands. Wow. So it just, yeah, it just like- Nobody, made, was, there, nobody was stealing. You could leave your wallet anywhere back there. Yeah, nobody, yeah. Nobody was and that happened in the Eastern Hemisphere. That happened in the Eastern Hemisphere. That's Eastern Hemisphere history. Eastern Hemisphere, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, whatever you're more... going to what, what are we going to steal over there? A couple of DVDs? <laughs> Wei Song Xian. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um, Roman slavery, Spartacus was a slave. Yeah, and make no mistake, because if I, if, 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 let's just be crystal clear real quick, and then I want you to talk. No, 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 be crystal clear. Because I know I'm a German kid, yeah. but the last name's still DeStefano, yeah. and you're just a swarthy Greek. Yeah. If we just pressed a button right now and went back to Spartacus time, I would have you enslaved. <laughs> I would have you chained up in my hair and get cuts, make no mistake. I would bang you out. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I'd be in trouble. Yeah, that's the thing. You'd be in trouble because because unfortunately, yeah. you have a lot of Italian kids are not the smartest kids. No. And when Italian kids are in charge, yeah. it's just a big problem. <laughs> and that's what happened with Rome. We're just a bunch of problem kids. Yeah, yeah, Italians yeah. are problems. Italians just can't help but start fights in clubs. It's a lot of racism. They and they, yeah. they can't go out and just dance. They got to bump dance people. A hundred Because if you don't think those Roman soldiers were on steroids marching into each one of those countries, you got another thing coming. Yeah, if those kids were roid raged out with fucking their hair gel through their helmets. If you don't think that when they were marching on Thrace and these other areas that they were conquering Gaul and all that, that when they were marching that they didn't start a fuck Iraq chant, you got another thing coming. You got another thing coming. <laughs> if you don't think they were playing the national anthem of the United States of America yeah. while they were fucking marching into each country, you got another thing coming. You know, another thing coming. If you don't think a few of them got disciplined because this garlic was a little strong in the sauce while they were out there in the camp, you got another thing coming. Yeah, it's just what it is because, and make no mistake, make no mistake, those kids were not going to let anybody who wasn't white date their daughters. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what it it's is. It's just what it is, is cuz Jesse Scatoro, his father's from Bensonhurst, right? Yeah. And um, first of all, his father had a friend that they called uh, Vinny the Mole because he never came out of his house before 5 p.m. So they yeah, called him Vinny the Mole. He just would pop up. Yeah, he just would pop up after 5. Hey, guys, how you doing? How you doing? It was always 5.15 or something yeah. like that. So they called him Vinny the Mole. Um, another thing is Jesse went to one of his cousin's weddings. Yeah, and he got bumped at one of his own first cousin's wedding. He got bumped, and he said it's one of the funniest stories I've ever heard. He said, the, you know, it was a big, it was a big Italian Bensonhurst, Brooklyn Bensonhurst. If you, if you don't live yeah. in New York, I mean, we're talking about like, it's like ground zero for Italian meatheads. It's like back it's in the like, day. Let me explain to you, like a Bensonhurst wedding. I'm not lying, to you guys. They would have enough penny ala vodka at that wedding to feed the entire country of Ethiopia. That's just what they it could is. just they could literally reverse an African famine. With the penny ala vodka specifically, that's at that wedding. Also, you would not see one eyebrow hair that was loose or out of place. Everyone's got threaded eyebrows. When you walk into a wedding like that, you have no idea who's the DJ because everybody looks like the DJ. <laughs> everybody looks like the DJ. And make no mistake, there's not. It's filled with all white kids, but not one of those kids is pale. Not one not, pale person all in there. Kids. You may have a few Puerto Ricans in there, yeah. but that's about it. Yeah, but everyone looks Puerto Rican because everyone's tanned up. Yeah. It's just what it is. It's what you're going to see, and ev the whole place is going to smell like Dracoir Noir. Yeah, it's, it's just what, what it, is. it is. So he was at the wedding, at his cousin's wedding, and it started off dancing. This is a wedding. This is this is just shows you how Italian kids can get when you get a lot of Italian kids yeah. in one room. We're at a wedding. Okay, this is a celebration. Right. At some point, the dance floor turned into a mosh pit and a fuck Iraq chant. Yeah. Somehow, so, yeah. somehow, like um, a Prince song or like a Michael Jackson beat it just turned into a fuck, fuck Iraq, Iraq chant. That's yeah. a 10 out of so 10. So there was a fuck Iraq chant on the dance floor. Yeah, it's just a 10. Yeah. And you know that happened with those Roman soldiers. Yeah. Those girls were marching in, yeah. and they started some fucking weird chant yeah. about fuck Gaul or fuck fuck the Vandals. Yeah. Fuck the Vandals. Fuck the Vandals. Well, yeah, there was a sandwich shop in Bay Ridge. I forgot the name of it, but when the owner died, this was in like 2005, yeah. when the owner died, like on the speakers outside, they played the national anthem for 24 hours straight. <laughs> That's a true story. Yeah, they yeah. Put, For 24 hours straight, they just played the national anthem. In his honor, That's in Charlie's fucking honor. It's yeah. just what it is with Italian kids. By the way, I was in Charlie's Sandwich Great Shop. Great Sandwich Shop. Great Sandwich. Go to Charlie's Sandwich Shop in Bay Ridge on 3rd Avenue and 93rd Street. It's the best sandwiches in the neighborhood. Unbelievable sandwiches. And Charlie was in there, I think. Charlie's the... Charlie's, yeah, Charlie's a big kid. Charlie's yeah. an Italian kid. He's an Italian kid. Charlie's and, been there for, for 15 years. And he sees me in there. He gives me a hand, hand pound. He goes, what's up, man? He goes, yeah, Chris was in here the other day. He goes, you know, you're, fu you're pretty funny with that wig on. He goes, we can put yeah, that wig on. That yeah. wig on. Yeah. <laughs> you're pretty funny with that yeah. wig. And then he goes, what are you and Chris going to shoot a skit? Here, yeah, cuz, yeah, we're gonna have to shoot a skit in Charlie's. Hearing the word skit is one of my favorite things. Yeah. When you tell people you're a comedian, they just go, When are you gonna do, do, when a, skit. You gonna shoot a, do shoot a skit? You always yeah. just shoot a skit in here, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, um, one time we were in there, it was me and Sergio Chacon. We were on our way to a gig and we had Mad Dog meet us, and he had his arm in the cast, and then uh. Mad Dog was just talking really loud, and then Mad Dog left to go home because he had to go wash his arm or something like that. And Charlie said, he goes, There's, he goes one of your friends says, yeah, he goes, he's a weird bird. <laughs> That's what he called him. He called Hey Bird a weird bird. Yeah, I'm always he goes, a, Kid's little, a weird bird. I'm always a little self-conscious when I'm around Hey Bird because I just feel like yeah. 
you know, uh, hey Bert. at any point, you just, you know, someone's going to think that, that, you know, hey, Bert's escaped from somewhere. Yeah. Hey, Bert. Uh, hey, yeah. Bert told me he goes into Charlie's Sandwich Shop twice a day, every day. True story. Yeah. And what the hey, Bert makes too much conversation with people. Yeah. Have you ever gone to eat with hey, Bert? Yeah. And he just always like. Uh, he can't enjoy the silence. Yeah. And he just kind of like he, he talks to the waitress too much. He's yeah. always like, yeah, well, hey, sweetheart, you know, like, which yeah. one? Mm, that sounds good. I'm like, just order, hey, Bert. Yeah. Just order. Listen, if you were in some rinky dink town in I. Iowa, that's fine. That's what they want. But this is New York City, yeah. specifically Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. They, they're not interested. Yeah. They don't want to hear what you have to say. The less you say, the better. Because make no mistake, they're just assuming your special needs getting a yeah. sandwich and your parents are outside. Make no mistake, these kids are about 25 generations removed from being Roman generals that yeah. just would walk into fucking towns and take, they would rape and pillage everybody. These are the kids who are running the fucking bagel shops and the sandwich shops in Bay Ridge. Yeah. Make no mistake. Uh, Charlie just assumes that this is the big day that your parents decided you're going to go in and order the sandwich on your own for the first time. Yeah, it's just and they're waiting outside and they're going to be proud of you when you come out because you're special needs. Hey, Bert. You're a special needs kid. <laughs> it's what it is. It's what it is. Hey, Bert. Yeah. So, All right. So, yeah. So, so what did you learn about Roman slavery? Well, yeah. I just want to set the backdrap a little bit about the Spartacus. Backdrop. Spartacus is obviously the most famous Roman slave that everyone knows. They make movies about him. They make TV shows. He's yeah. been sort of romanticized yeah. as this big hero. By the way, uh, when the Romans finally defeated Spartacus, they just started crucifying yeah, his followers. Because they never found Spartacus' body. No, well, he killed himself. He, he, That's uh, what they say? He fell on his sword. Yeah, he'd rather die that way. Really? Yeah, he either died in battle. What? What, what is it, Zach? Can you just look that up? Because that's important. He killed, I didn't know he killed himself. I thought that he just died and they could never find his bod. Uh, That'd I th be a nice bot to find. Kid was probably ripped up. There's no question that the kid had a he had a six pack. Official cause is killed in action. He killed in action. He's so a KIA. He died, as he, we he'd say. rather die that way than be captured. What I, from what I remember, is like you know what I'm gonna die on the battlefield, and because uh, he knew that if he was captured, that's what the Romans did. The Roman let make no mistake. We're, we have a we have a lot of distance from the Roman Empire now, right. and we always talk about the achievements of Rome. The uh, you know the architecture of the Republic, obviously, the the greatest you know the longest empire in history, the cultural achievements, the scientific achievements, the art achievements. Mm -hmm. But Rome was a fucking brutal empire. That if they captured you, they Jesus was not. The only one who'd been crucified. He's just the most famous kid. Yeah. Everyone got crucified. Everybody. What they did was they nailed you to a cross, mm -hmm. so you slowly bled out, well, and your organs fell down to your feet. Yes. Well, that's what they did. If that's what they did, if they liked you, they nailed you to the cross. Yeah. If they didn't like you and you were just a fucking plea peasant little piece of shit, they would tie you with rope, tie your wrists and feet, and then break your ribs, which took. Ten times longer. Do you mind if I say this? Yeah. Cute. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That's cute. What a cute little way to go. That's a cute way to go. Yeah. yeah. So crucifixion is fucking brutal. Sometimes they crucify people upside yeah. down. I think St. Peter got crucified, crucified upside, upside down. down. I think you might have learned that when Father Bill had his yeah. dick in your mouth. Bad. Were you there when they crucified him to the tree? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. That's a good boy, Chris. Tremble. That's a good boy. Tremble. Blood and body of Christ. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? There you go, Chris. Just back and forth, Chris. You're a good boy. Oh, Jesus loves you. Yeah. Tell Lynn, thank you for the Edmonds cake. Yeah. And of course, tell Eileen. I said her and Victor should come by soon for their sacrament. Yeah, for their for their marriage counseling. She had a nice shiner in here on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. make no mistake, I took a couple of Sudafed, and I am jacked up. I'm about to pull my dick out. Because <laughs> Sudafeds get you jacked up. My ear's clogged, and yeah. I can't hear anything. It's going to pop, but I'm a Sudafed out kid, and I'm ready to fuck. I feel like a fucking zombie, right? I feel like I'm on meth. Yeah, you ever you're taken a Sudafed, Mike? It's fu I'm fucking wild right now. Yeah, we're going to take a picture of Mike's face and put it on the History Hyena's Instagram. Follow us there because he looks like an emoji. Here's another thing. Make no mistake, Mike will be a t-shirt of ours at some point. At some point, <laughs> his face will just be in that yellow emoji smiley face. Yeah. Because it's shaped like a fucking emoji, am I yeah. right? 
because I guarantee you, though, we post a picture up of Mike. Yeah. He's going to get a few of our non-toots, our Patreon members of the Matriarch, are going to want to sit in his lap. For sure. <laughs> Would you sit in Mike Mush's lap? 100%. He's got a comfy, wumpy lap. He's going to be open for me, working with me in San Antonio, March 29th to the 31st. Yeah. So, fellas, ladies, trannies, who's ever out there, whoever our fans are, if you want to meet Mike Mush, Mikey Emoji Face, you'll see him at the LOL San Antonio. 100%. Tell us about the Roman slavery. What'd you learn? Oh, I'm, now I'm really lot, thinking about it. I learned it. a lot of lot of cute things. I learned a lot of cute things. I was gonna say something else, but I forgot it. Oh you have early onset. No, I was gonna say, listen, this is what we want you to do. We want you to go to our iTunes page and leave us a cute little review. What me and Chris have decided is we're gonna do is we're gonna read all your reviews and then we're gonna send you a fucking cute autograph picture and mug to the cutest review who who leaves us a cute review yeah. on iTunes. Cute. So everyone go to iTunes and review us. Five stars fucking and write a cute little review. We'll read them yeah, all. If we'll you're not going to give us five stars, just don't even bother. I swear yeah. to God, if you give us less than five stars, I'll find where, I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm going to take out three generations of your family like the Quinn Dynasty. It's the only thing the agents are good for. Yeah, well, there it yeah. is. So Roman slavery, obviously, Roman slavery was 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 a big part of society back then. The funny thing about, um, we don't know how many rebellions actually took place, but that there were rebellions shows you that slavery was brutal. And it often was brutal, as you can see from this mosaic that um, ISIS has pulled up where uh, there's a master whipping his slave. Right. Slave was variegated <sighs> and just like, um, you know, we always compare slavery to the um, antebellum South, you know, mm -hmm. because that was obviously the la slavery's last stand in the Western Hemisphere, right? And um, that was the most brutal because it had that racial component. But Roman slavery was also brutal, right. but it was variegated, like I said, because there was it wasn't it depend on what kind of slave you were. If you were a slave in the silver mines, right, in ancient Greece, and then of course Rome. Textile uh, in the textile fields. Right. Um, if you were in, 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 in any type of agriculture slave, if you were a right. slave in the farms, it was fucking brutal. Brutal. Right. Um, if you were one of the slaves that was raising some rich dude's kids, was a little bit better. You know what I mean? Um, so they they they, they speculate. Maybe one out of three people in in Rome were slaves. That many, which is wild. And if you were free, did it mean you were a citizen? There was like three levels. If you were a citizen in Rome, that was like the best. I was like walking around with a badge right. of honor. You were a citizen. Then you had your freed people who were just like free. You know what I mean? And then you had your slaves. And just like, um, just like slavery in the South in America, just like um, slavery all over the world throughout history. Um, you know, slaves became free, slaves um, rebelled, slaves, um, some people wanted to be slaves. Right. Because it was it was a guaranteed food, guaranteed right. life. Right. They got slaves in many different ways. Um, mostly it was conquering. Mm -hmm. So, And you wanted to be a slave if you were conquered a lot of times because that's what they did with you. You were either enslaved when you lost, or and, murdered on the spot, or just crucified and and and, and murdered. Yeah, that was your. Uh, those were your options. Yeah. So, but the risk was always to get too many. You needed able-bodied dudes mm -hmm. to do all the hard labor that that props up an empire. And make no mistake, every empire is propped up by slavery. Okay, that's just what it is, what it's always been. The ancient Hebrews had slaves. The Egyptians right. had slaves. Everyone in the East had slaves. Slaves. And it was fucking brutal. And it's propped up by slavery. So they wanted these able-bodied Spartacus-type dudes, but they were also cognizant of the fact that if they had too many of those dudes in the same place that spoke the same language, that it was a threat for rebellion. So they right. were smart, and they knew... You know, separate uh, the best way to conquer people is to separate them. So one of the one of the cool, wow, not cool, but smart tactics. Yeah, a little Freudian slip. Yeah, there. A little Freudian slip. Because make no mistake, ah. you are a piece of shit member of the patriarchy. Yes. Yeah. One of the ingenious things uh, they did was they made sure to separate the slaves based on language. So they would have able body. Of course, they took women and children, too. A lot of rape happened, too. A lot of sex slaves. It is what it's it is. just what it is. There was also a lot of people, pirate. There was also a pirate market that grew up around the slave trade where, like, you know, people as a career would kidnap people and a lot of times free people in other places and, and, and move them. And, and, and also, the pirates weren't taking them for slaves. The pirates would take them and then 
move them to a place where they were free? No, no, no. They'd steal free people. Or they'd steal, oh, they'd travel around and steal people, sometimes free within the confines, without, through, without, with, I see what uh, you mean. within the confines of the empire, sometimes outside. And they'd kidnap those people, tribes, people, and otherwise, sometimes citizens and otherwise, right. and move them and sell them as slaves. There was That's a black brutes. market for slaves, yeah. And that was the biggest fear, that was one of the biggest fears of, of Romans, was being, like, kidnapped driven someplace not driven right you know rode on a horse or whatever the fuck right. they had back then and go to another place and sold a slave because your identity's gone your freedom's gone and yeah. it happened a lot and it was because you could just be a free guy you're just a fucking guy with a business wife kids and you just get picked up by some somalian yeah, and you, then you're done well, it wasn't somalians but yeah those are pirates yeah well see the thing is you're a kid like you would be a perfect kid you're walking around let's say you're in the you're somewhere around Mount Vesuvius, one of those yeah, villages. Yeah, bopping around. You're bopping around. My butt's, my butt's popping out of my toga. Yeah, you're walking around. You're fucking throwing sweets in your mouth. Chabela, Chabela. Yeah, I'm, ta- I'm banging toots. I got a sore throat. Yeah. I got a low-grade fever. Girls are giggling, going, hee, hee, hee. And you walk around. You're a big fucking kid. Then you go and you meet your friend Sergios, Mox- Sergios Chiconios. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys throw hands in the morning, and they watch you box. And back then, it's hot out, so your glistening body is just out in the sun, and your muscles are looking pretty good, mostly tri. <laughs> Because you're pushing down gay. Yeah. And you just got kind of a weird body that's gonna blow out at some point. But right now you're very useful and AB bottled and strong. Yeah, because I got I got I got triceps so I can push things down onto ships and I got a big fat ass so you can load me up like a mule. Yeah. So you're sitting there boxing with Sergio and the girls are giggling in the foreground, right? Dogs are running by and you're saying, get those things away from me. And then you say, I have to pick up the baby soon. Yeah, I have to pick up the baby. The only thing I want is a little Sphinx cat. Yeah. That's what I like. Your baby's mommy rolls around and she says in Latin, but she's like like that, but I haven't left this area. I'm just staying here. I got on a ferry. I got confused. You need to pick me up, right? Yeah. So you got to leave boxing, right, with Sergios uh, Chicanos. Yeah. And you got to go pick up Lizus. Lizus Puerto Ricanos. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's your baby's mama. And yeah. she's got lost. She's my baby's mama's mama. She's your baby's mama's mama. And she got lost because she got on a ferry from, from Sicily to to a Mount Vesuvius town and she got she got lost on the yeah, water she got lost she got confused because she doesn't usually leave Vesuviusness right so you have to go pick her up and then I am a slave catcher I'm a slave fucking trader on the right. black market I'm sitting there with Mush and I go look at this fucking cat yeah. this kid's able body he, I'm starting I look at you like dollar signs because I'm screwed it yeah, so you're sitting there with fucking full Hasidic curls on your boat, just yeah. looking for you're fucking sniffing, you're sniffing bags of money like a little Jew truffle pig. Way song she ain't. Yeah, I knew, that, I knew that was gonna make its way onto the podcast one way or the other. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. It's yeah. funny. It's what it is. We love everybody. Way Jean Jean Jean. We go for comedy first. That's what it is. So you're sitting there and you're going to pick up your baby's mama's mama who's confused because she's never left town Vesuvius and now she got on a ferry and got confused. And she got confused out there. And because she's a small-minded person and, yeah. a lot, and she's talking to you like this. Yeah. And she's like, Chris, I got a little confused. You need to come pick me up because my, also my flip-flop broke so I can't move. Yeah, you need to come and get I slipped the, on a rock. You need to come get the baby yeah. with an eye. Yeah. So you, she's looking she's looking because she heard that Rome has gacoplantanos and protein that, that she could put in the baby's pasta. Absolutely. I need to make a stool cuz listen, your baby, I don't know how to put to her food. That's not me. A <laughs> <laughs> baby mama too healthy. Yeah. So you're going to get that and then me and Mush are looking. And we're looking and we go, he's perfect, right? And so how do we capture you, right? We fucking throw a little black and white onto your boat. Put a little black and white cookie right there. Cookie drops on the floor. And you go, yeah. Yeah. And you reach down and you just fucking throw it in your mouth. And you look over the board like the dumb fucking kid you are because you're fucking stupid. Well, no, I reach down to get the black and white cookie. And as I'm reaching down and put it in my mouth, my sinus backs up into my ear. My equilibrium's off. <laughs> your equilibrium's <laughs> off. So then we fucking, you fall off the boat. But then I throw out a trail of black and whites. And you swim to our boat. And on your... On your own accord, you hop into the boat and I sell you in Rome as a fucking slave. Yeah. You're a former free person who's now a fucking slave because you're fucking stupid. Stupid. And that's yeah. what happened. Trail so- of black and white cookies and then you and then how do you, and then you tied me up. All you had to do to tie me up was you fucking those black and white cookies and you led them all right up into a into a a fake 
person's lap. You dressed him like a priest, a little fake person's lap. Yeah. And then he just, as I was sitting there, sitting in that lap, telling the priest my little secrets. Yeah. You just fucking wrapped the rope around me. And I thought, at first I thought it was his arms. Yeah. So I got, fun, I started to get an erection I, and it felt warm, <laughs> but then it was really a rope. And then before I know it, my hands were tied behind my back and I thought it was a weird sex game. So I was into it. But as long as you kept pounding black and whites in my face, yeah. I just didn't let it happen. And then before I realized what was going on, it was too late. It, you were distracted the whole time and it was too late by the time you became cognizant of the situation. Yeah. And my equal, by the time I, my sinuses balanced back out, yeah. I was already in another place where I was already, unfortunately, my freedom had been taken away from me. And I took you to the slave market, and I'm a smart fucking black market slave dealer. Yeah, you're screwed in. Yeah. So I, I looked at your body while me and Mush were scouting you out when we were stalking you yeah. to be stolen, and I noticed you got great tries, yeah. but you got a weird tit. Yeah. So I put you in a wife beater to cover the tit to get full market value. Yeah. And yeah, that's going to be whoever bought you's problem when yeah. they see you taking off and they go, yeah. what am I going to do with that weird tit? No. Well, what you did is you put me in a New York. And I Yan say milk it. You put, you put me in a New York Yankees batting practice jersey because I look jacked in those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you put me in a batting practice jersey and then somebody bought me because I could not see my tit. I concealed my tit, yeah. but I was still jacked out. Yeah. So, you know, all that stuff happened. Slavery was a big part. The, the interesting thing about the ancient Roman world is that, and even before that, in antiquity in Greece, Aristotle, like, for all the genius things he said, just viewed slaves, and he always referred to their crooked back as evidence of, of that these were people who were born slaves and are natural slaves. And he believed in a natural slave class. I mean, it's one of the most unenlightened things. But it lets you know, we're looking back at that, it lets you know how much of a part of civilization slavery was, how natural it was seemed. Right. It, it was just like, there was no, it was like me and you thinking about traveling to another universe, which may happen one day or whatever. Right. That's, at, that's how foreign the thought of there not being slavery was to people in the ancient world right like it was just, like when people were fighting for their freedom or whatever they were fighting for their particular freedom or they were rebelling against the conditions of their particular slavery which as we said were sometimes brutal right um they weren't fighting for the eradication of slavery. Right. That was a concept that not even the slaves could conceive. Right. Because it was such a the way they viewed it, a necessary part of getting things done. Right. You couldn't, they just didn't have capitalism yet. They couldn't be like, hey, I pay you this. There's, right. We didn't have like the socialist fucking pr pushback and yeah. unions. Like any, if I go into silver mines, fucking I'm protected, my health. They didn't have any of that shit. No, anything that you see, anytime you go to Italy, see the Colosseum or any Greek, Parthenon, anything, it's always built by slaves. Yeah. It's always built on the backs of slaves. Pyramids, of everything. Everything. It was just a big part of society and like, yeah, the, the rich the richer you were, the higher class you were in Rome, the more slaves you had. I yeah. mean, you know, there's some some people had estates with like hundreds of slaves on it. Yeah, and that, that's that's how you were judged in society, how yeah. many slaves you had. Yeah, there's also evidence that um, there was differences, though. There was evidence like um, Plutarch wrote um, uh, when, he, when it was referencing Cicero, who was, um, who was uh, advocating for the, to rebel against one of these fucking, uh, Mark Antony. He was Mark advocating, Anthony. he was he's pleading, ex. pleading to the senators to rebel against Mark Antony. He made reference to, we've been enslaved by Mark Anthony, by Mark Anthony um, for six years longer than a slave. Um, right. So that tips some scholars off to think that slavery, um, for a lot of people, was quick. That people were, you know, they were... Like you weren't a slave your whole life? You weren't a slave your whole life. That you, you worked and you, like, more like a surf situation. But we just don't know. Right. The we truth is we don't we know. We don't know, and we have no evidence about Roman slavery from the slave perspective. Right. We don't know. We have little evidence, like like things like this, like this mosaic, certain uh, scholars talking about it, certain historians talking about it. But what we do know is that it was prevalent. We do know that it was, and common sense will tell you that it was often brutal, often not, dependent. Right. And they enslaved all types of people. And the difference was, I mean, because it's always interesting to think about, the difference between American slavery, Roman slavery, whatever other types of slavery, is that, you know, there was this racial element to the American slavery where, you know, you could, you, you know, it was white people and black people, and you could kind of see 
Yeah. They, these, this person's a slave, this person's not. Right. But even in American, often people bought their freedom. There was free people. There was all, there was variegation as well. Yeah. Well, like in Spartacus's time, I mean, that's where, you know, we've said it before in the podcast, slavery comes from the word from Slavic, which is Eastern European nations, and that's exactly where Spartacus was from. That's yeah. where they were taking the slaves from, Eastern yeah. Europe. They were taking them from Eastern Europe. They took them from Gaul, which became France. They, they would take them sometimes from Africa. They enslaved all types of people, but often, yes, the white people enslaved white people. It, uh, you know, they were white Europeans enslaving Europeans. It's just what it is. And treating them fucking brutally in a lot of, yeah. in, in a lot of, in a lot of um, instances. So slavery, it's an interesting thing, man, because it's always been. It's always been. The Greeks were brutal too. The Greeks were brutal too. If you if you come from a tribe or a civilization or an empire that had an army, right? They, you enslave people because that's what you do. It's just what it is. That's where you you go to war, and if you win, the people who you capture, the women are going to be fucking sex slaves, and you're going to bang them out and make babies you're with gonna them. Crack them open and clean them you're out. Crack them up and clean them out against their will. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, the kids are going to grow up fucking slave boys, or they're going to be murdered. They're going to kill the kids. They're going to be murdered because. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do when you subjugate a people. You either kill them or enslave them, and that's just what people did. Yeah, and you know we the, the farther back in history you go, the closer we were to hyenas, animals. Yeah, cause that was a fucking cute little episode. It was fucking cute. We did a lot of cute things, and at the end of every episode, what we like to do, what we fucking like to do, is we like to dedicate. We like to just leave a few fucking minutes in the in each episode to just read out the names. Of the newest members of the matriarchy, the newest fucking hyenas, to crawl in to the matriarchy, to crawl into the cackle, and we like to shout them out and say how much money they they I uh, like to guess it. Well, guess how much money I have the actual answers. Giannis guesses it, and he also guesses their ethnicity. Because make no mistake, we're funny first, and we deal with PC shit later. Yeah, we deal with the rep. We we, we, we our podcast is how Chrissy lives. Yeah, just call us green lights hyenas. It's just what it is. Yeah. First up, welcome to the matriarchy. Orlando Alonzo. Well, there's little doubt that that kid is a white walker. Yeah. yeah and he gave five. Beyond the wall. He's beyond the wall. He's $5. He's $10. Wow. Que pasa, mi gente? He's doing good. He gave us a lot of plantonos. Amanda Tyler, who looks like a pa, 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 piece. Okay. If you got a last name, uh, Tyler, you said? Tyler. Or Taylor. Tyler. Tyler. Okay. We're dealing with a 100%. Blonde white girl. Hunt. Wow, nailed yes, it. Yes, yes. She's definitely a girl who likes to go with her girls. She definitely got a little fucking too wasted on St. Patty's Day and yeah. fucking shit on the floor and passed. Yeah. And then she pulled it. She threw up and then she made out with a guy at a bar. She's fucking from Atlanta and she gave five dollars. Correct. Yeah. Mackenzie Frederick. Wow. Listen. Let me just say this and be crystal clear. If your name is Scott, you're a white kid. If your name is Mackenzie, there is no doubt you're 100% wee. <laughs> so we're dealing with a white girl. Um, she's got daddy's money because her name is Mackenzie. Um, Last name Frederick. Oh, I'm Mackenzie friend. Like, so she's definitely, she's got the rich girl trail off. Like, hey, you want to go out? She's got the rich girl trail off. Yeah. And so she gave 25 because it's her dad's money. She gave $5 because she's being a fucking dude. Yeah. <laughs> Even though, welcome to the matriarchy, Mackenzie. Yeah, Mackenzie. She's probably from Kansas. One name, Tyler. Yo, you hurt. ISIS hit me. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah. How much? Yo, come on, cuz. Five beans. $10 and he's a white kid. What? What's his name? Oh! Tyler. Tyler? Yeah. I should have known from Tyler. There's no black kids named Tyler, right? No. All right, next up. Okay. Selena Ferragamo. Selena. Okay, she's from Canada. Yeah. Um, or she could be Puerto Rican Selena Gomez. Selena, Selena Ferragamo? Ferragamo. Wow. No. Wow. That's a curl. She's got black pubic hairs. She's from Italy. She has no fumare. No. And her ancestors were fucking Roman kids. How much money did she give? Five dollars in cash. That's what it is in an envelope. Yeah. Brian Coat. C O A T E. Brian Coat. Yeah. Um, his ethnicity is the most boring fucking name of all time. Brian Coat. Yeah. Wow. He didn't even put a picture up. Yeah. I mean, he comes from a long line of immigrants who apparently their specialty was taking your coat. Yeah. So his grandfather worked at, at the coat stop at a restaurant. Yeah. His, his grandfather worked at Bar Burlington Coat Factory. 
It's what it is. He's a white kid. He gave five bucks. Next up, Camila Lopez, who's a pie. Listen to me. What's her name? Camila Lopez. Let me talk to you for a second, Camila Lopez, because listen. She's you, a piece. You may not talk like that because maybe you're from another different place, but your heart always is going to be Puerto Rican. So no matter which way you sound, you're going to sound like this and that's it. How much money? $10. That's right. That's right. And she gave $10 because she know that she liked that money's going to your baby's mama. So she did it in solidarity with Puerto Rico. That's what it is. Okay. Next up, um, we have Cole Perry. Cole Perry? P-A-R-R-Y. Wow. That name should come with a pair of boat shoes. Yeah. And that kid does not wear socks. He doesn't wear socks. He's got a girlfriend with pearl earrings and a Patagonia pullover. He's a wasps kid. And he gave $25. He gave $5. You fucking cheap honk a dunk. Oh, here we go. Next up, Stacy Chan. Wow. C H A N. Chan. Can I get a Wei Zhong Jing, please? Wei Zhong Jing. Yes. Yeah. And can, do you mind if we bow real quick? Yeah, let's just, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the matriarchy, Stacy. How much did Stacy give? Well, I don't know what the conversion rate is now because they're killing us on the trade deficit. How much yen did she give? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know if we have any tariffs or taxes on them. I'm going to say she gave fucking 10 bucks. She gave 25. Wow. Yeah. Stacy's getting a call. Because, yeah, she gave that money. Because that yeah. Yeah. Because no, make no mistake, Chinese like to invest in America so they can hide their tax money from their communist government. It's what it is. Welcome to America, baby. Julia Davia. Julia Davia. Or Davila. Davila. Okay, I I believe that um, her mother was one of Johnny Versace's designers, Davina. Because mm -hmm. that's just the name you have when you just start designing dresses in a small Italian village. And she's an Italian girl with no fumare. No and she fucking loves Chris Stefano. How and much did she give? She thinks you're Italian because of the name Stefano. So she's dreaming about living in Syacity with you. Yeah. But you're a German Irish fucking drunk kid. Yeah. So she's going to cancel a membership in a month. She's a white girl. She's Italiano. What did she give? She gave $5. Yeah. Because yeah, it's always cash. Okay. Here we go. Next up, Kaka 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 Cardo. <laughs> Cardo, he's PPW, funny kid. Uh, it's what what he it is. He gave five bucks. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Next up, Christina Chianchi. Ch wow, Christina Chianchi, how you doing? She makes good Zeppelis. Yeah. And make no mistake, for a little extra cash, her, her, her brothers, of which they're two, of which they're two, work the fucking San Gennaro's every year for a little extra cash. And it's what it is. And she gave $5. She's an Italian girl with no fumare. And she's sending an envelope in cash. Cash. Next up, we got Joey Giacomi. Listen to me, Joey. Listen to me. All right? This is your mother, Joey. No, sorry. Joey Giacomini. Jo Joey. It's even worse. Because, yeah, these names are fucking. These names. What did Joey give? Jo Joey's got a picture of him and his dog. Jo Joey gave. I'm saying Joey. What's it? Camini? Jo Giacomini. Giacomini, cause you're so Italian, it's fucking hurting my balls. Yeah. All right, you're breaking my balls just by having your fucking name, you Italian fucking grease ball. What do you call him? Sauce monkey. Sauce monkey, what did he give? $5. $10. Wow. Next up, Brent Bizzle. Brent Bizzle. Uh, any kid named Brent's a white kid. Oh, yeah, this kid is, I mean, he can't be any whiter. Yeah, he's a Milwaukee white kid, Wisconsin white kid, Gonzaga white kid. He gave five bucks. What did yeah, five bucks. Good. Yeah, good call. Not safe over 90 degrees, Jason. <laughs> PPW nominee. Uh, I'm just going to say he gave five bucks. 25 bucks. Wow. And his picture is the New York Yankee symbol. Oh, cuz, welcome to the matriarchy. You're going to be hearing from us soon. And I guarantee you when we call, we're going to hear this accent on the end of the phone. Here we go. Next up, Sabrina 38 Double D McGee Robles. She's about to get slid up into Chris D. Chris D's fucking DMs. She'll get cracked open. And, wh and what did she give? Yeah, her ethnicity. City is Coco cracked open and cleaned out. How much? Five dollars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next up, Jack Pollock. Jack Pollock. Wow. Yeah. He's got a picture. He's holding two ice cream cones. Okay. Okay. Well, he's bisexual kid. Yeah. So those are two to symbolize. He goes both ways, mm -hmm. left and right handed. Um, he's a white kid, and he's related to the great um, deconstructionist painter who just J Jackson Pollock. I mean, he's probably a distant cousin. Just. Mm -hmm. So what did he give? He gave five dollars. You know he did. Yeah, he's a white kid. From Laura Monroe looks like a piece. Laura Monroe is definitely related to 
um, some slave owning wasps in American history. She's a white girl, wasp. All right, she goes to Presbyterian Church. How much? Her house smells like an anthropology store. How much? Ten dollars. Yeah, five dollars. Five dollars. You fucking cheap honk a dunk. <coughs> Brian Neal. Brian Neal. Wow. Uh, definitely a teacher. Mr. Neal. Hey, Mr. Neal, can I talk to you after class? Mm-hmm. Definitely some suspicion that he's definitely doing some Chris teacher weird things. Yeah, texting minors. <laughs> <laughs> How much? He gave five dollars. He's a white kid. Yeah, that's yeah, what it is. Yeah. Last but not least, Elvis A. Romero. Que pasa, mi gente? Um, we should just play the Game of Thrones theme song when those names read. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's uh, he's a. Uh, I'm gonna say he's an El Salvadorian kid. I'm gonna say half El Salvadorian, half um, Germanic wasp. That's where his parents met. Some southern border town. He gave ten bucks. Yeah, ten bucks. Oh, I'm sorry. We got a few more. I apologize. I, I, okay. I spoke too soon. Next up, Lanny Santiago. Lanny Santiago. Can you just cue up the Game of Thrones song, please? <laughs> yeah, Lanny Santiago. What did she give? Um, where in the world is Lanny Santiago? She gave five bucks. She gave twenty five bucks. Wow. Yeah. Who says immigrants don't contribute to the economy? There it is. Okay. Next up, Megan. Only a little bit of fumes, Murphy. Megan Murphy. Her father's a potato farmer. Megan, she's from Long Island, and she's friends with Sean Donnelly. How much did she give? Five dollars. Five dollars. She's a PPW of the week. You're funny a name. Fucking... Only a little bit of fumes funny. Chris Cardinale, a.k.a. Cuck Norris. Uh, PPW. Yep. PPW. Uh, Italian kid. Um, he's from Chicago. I'm going to say he's a Chicago kid. Yeah. And he gave ten dollars. He gave five bucks. Five dollars? Yeah. Fucking cheap. Thomas Belzowski. Cuz fucking pierogi dumb fuck. Yeah. Cuz he's dumb Polak. But I, cuz we got a few like major Polak names following yeah. us. It's this good kid's to- got, yeah. I mean, this kid, this kid's straight into a camp with a name like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the matriarchy. You're a Polish kid. How uh, much did he give? Uh, I don't know. He gave five jars of applesauce. Yeah. Cuz they put applesauce on pierogies. He gave 25 bucks. What? Yeah, because we got some new uh, top tier. What do we call those top t- level, top two? Top tier t- top, top tier toots. Top tier TTTs. Non- yeah, TTTs non toots. Next up, Rafael Moody. Rafael Moody, uh, wasp white kid. He gave five bucks. He's just a boring white kid. Five bucks. Yep, but he's no. He's funny. He looks like a DJ. I like Rafael Moody. He looks like a DJ out kid. Yeah, Austin Buddha. Austin Buddha. Um, Austin Buddha is just a cool college kid. You know. How much did you give? What's up? Are you going to date with Austin? Yeah, I mean, it's the Cheesecake Factory. He gave $5. You nailed it. Yeah. Alex Gonzalez. Alex Gonzalez. Hit it, ISIS. (laughs) Over the wall. White Walker. Beyond the wall. Yeah, he's a cuz. Yeah, he's a Hispanic kid, and we love him, and uh, he gave five pesos. Last but not least, Leanne the Garlic Slicer. Leanne the Garlic Slicer, PPW nominee. Obviously, she's a good she's a good Italian woman who occasionally might get disciplined. Yeah, she looks like a piece. Yeah, don't Leanne put, the Garlic Slicer will get cracked open. You, uh, Chrissy's going to coco you, and listen, just be easy on the garlic, or you might get disciplined. How much did she give? Five dollars. You nailed it. Yeah. Well, that was it. I mean, those are the newest members of the matriarchy, and we thank you so much for your service. You want to, should we call a 25? Do you want to call Chan? Let's yeah. call Stacey Chan. We, we should. And we need to get a list going. Yeah. yeah. We got to get a number? Okay. We got to get a list going of like all our $25 members and just have it out, and then, you know, so we can keep track of who we call. We'll get one. So one of you guys got to fucking, we got to just make that list, right? Yeah. We just have to have it ready to know, because, yeah, who else is there to call? Is there anyone? Yeah. Do you have any other interesting facts about Spartacus? About Spartacus? Yeah. What do I have interesting about him? Um, the kitchen, he raided the kitchen on the first, uh, used kitchen utensils to ignite the first rebellion. You know, they all, here's another thing I learned about them. All of them could have went home. They escaped. They could have went home, but they could just continue to fight. They were, yeah. They, they were, didn't want to go home. They were, they were like, they turned back at the Alps. Yeah. Because because they would go to these because they would just always be enslaved. It's really weird because Spartacus, all he really wanted was to go home to Thrace. But by that time, the rebellion had grown and he'd become so much yeah. big, bigger than. And he probably knew his wife was already dead. Yeah, or just banging out somebody else. Like when you yeah. know when you're a soldier and you leave, you know your wife bangs someone out. It's just what it is, right? It's, it's just, just what it is. And so they turn back and eventually. 
he was defeated, but they they defeated a few Roman legions for for a quick second. Yeah, the prostitutes in Rome were often slaves too. Just like when you, that's the that's the dark side of, and why prostitution should be legal because when it's illegal, it, it, you just you you know you prov- you provide for uh, fertilizer for like human sex trafficking. You know, right. So it should be protected by law, prostitution, because it's not going to stop. And I believe it should be taxed, you know? It's a good a good source of tax revenue, too. So in Rome, too, prostitutes were often slaves. Like now, you just you know that there's a lot of human trafficking going on, and it's very unfortunate. It's just what it is. It's very unfortunate. But yeah, major source of Roman slavery was, was military expansion. Um, and it's what it is. All right, cuz. Well, you know what? Well, you want to? You got somebody on? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my god, Mush! When is my fucking ear gonna feel better? Now it's clogged up again. Uh, about about a week. Just a week. I'm gonna have to deal with it. Even with taking the oral antibiotics, it just doesn't help. You'll be you'll be good in a couple of days, but your flight's gonna suck. But after that, you'll be fine. It's just gonna suck. By yeah. the time I'm flying back home on Monday, it'll be better. You should be, unless there's something horribly wrong. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck. You got somebody on, Zach? Let's do yeah, it. Two cute kids from Westchester. Wow. Yeah. What's up, two cute kids from Westchester? Uh, you only got one of them right now. Who is? Which one is this? I'm Tommy. What's up, Tommy? I'm Chris Stefano, aka Chrissy Balls. How you doing? <laughs> So did you and your boy really go Dutch and split the twenty five dollar membership? No, no, he's a he's a non tune as well. Oh, so so you're paying twenty five and then he's paying twenty five. He's not paying twenty five, but uh, he he started a while ago and he got me interested in the podcast. I see. Yeah. What are you doing now, Tommy? I'm at work. What do you work? Garbage uh, garbage pickup. What do you do? Yeah, I'm a project engineer for a construction. Wow, company. you're a fucking smart kid. Yeah. Oh, Giannis no, Papas no. just got on the phone too. What's up, kid? How you doing? Hey, how's it going, man? Good. Yeah, now, where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to school out in Pennsylvania. Yeah, you're just a fucking American kid, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's some Westchester Community College. What's been your favorite moment of the podcast so far? <laughs> Westchester Community College. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Anything what, good? Anything that you really liked? What's your favorite episode so far that we've done? Steel Pipe Chrissy. Yeah, yeah. People love Steel Pipe Chrissy. Yeah, That's when a I great go episode. fucking wild. Yeah, and that episode was great. Are you a white kid, black kid, Spanish kid? White kid. You're a white kid. Wee. Wee. Wow, yeah, nice. Uh, I was hoping to make it up to Palisades this weekend, but I can't. So oh, to see Yanni P. Yeah, hopefully I'll make it out to Connecticut to see you. Yeah, oh. come to the Wall Street Theater in Norwalk, Connecticut. I wish you could have went to go see Yanni this weekend. What are you doing? You got a toot lined up? And our friend's leaving uh, for Australia, so we're throwing her a party, and uh, it's our other friend's birthday party. Yo, you got? Do you have a friend who's a girl? You a little gay? <laughs> <laughs> you got? Are you a single kid, or what, are you banging anything out? A single kid. When's the last time you cracked something open and cleaned it out? <laughs> oh man, it's been too long, man. You haven't cracked something open in a while, ladies. If you're listening, go fucking message. <laughs> Two, what, what's your what's Patreon your, name again? Two cute kids from Westchester. Two cute kids from Westchester. They're looking to crack something open. Yeah. Yeah. How old are you, Tommy? I am 26. Wow, wow. you're a fucking young kid. You don't even need Viagra's yet. Yeah, yeah. You know he's cracking open <laughs> his own self and cleaning himself out a lot. Yeah, yeah, make no mistake. Yeah, your belly button gets a little sticky every night. <laughs> All right, Tommy, we got to go. Thank you for being a Valley member of the Matriarch, and you're in fucking non toot Thank you. That's right. it. That's Later. it. Yeah, he's a good kid from Westchester. Tommy's a nice kid from Originally West- from Pennsylvania probably means his parents were Mennonites. It's just what it, it is. It happens a lot when you, people say they're from uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. A lot of times. You got anybody else, Aki? Yeah, you know, one more? Get, let's get one more. Yeah, let's get one more. Yeah, kid. I mean, this is a stupid idea by me. I'm just kept, I'm feeling sicker and sicker. But we have to come in because we got the girls got to eat. And make no mistake, it's going to be a great interview. And we really care what they have to say. But we really just want them to post on their Instagram. Yeah. You know, because a lot of the slaves in Rome were, uh, they went to Greece and they got a lot of Greek slaves. They had a lot of yeah. Greek slaves. Because, make no mistake, there was a few slaves, women, that were fucking pieces. Well, 100%. Greece has had a lot of pieces. Do you think the women, like, the women 
who are pieces now were pieces back then. Like, like there's a lot of Greek pieces, a lot of Puerto Rican pieces. You think they were? Think there were pieces back then? What do you think? A hundred percent, there were pieces. Back Who's then. this, Zach? Who do we got? Leo Love Handles, what's up, baby? It's Chrissy D, Chrissy Bitchips from the History of Hyenas. What's up, cuz? What's up, guys? You caught me in my practice right now. I'm coaching my team. Are oh, you coaching your team? Do you coach yeah, that team yeah. and also do you coach the team and you got the whistle in one hand and a pastrami sandwich in the other? Uh, I'm more of like a like a torta Mexican sandwich. Oh, you're a torta? All right, because you're a Mexican kid. Yeah. We call you guys white. We call you guys White Walkers now because you're beyond the wall. <laughs> What do you think of that? You think that's a new funny thing? <laughs> What's that? You think that's a new funny thing? Giannis came up with oh. it. I love it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> dude, what sport do you coach? Soccer? No, baseball, man. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's a coin flip. Yeah. Either baseball or soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, where do you live again, Leo Love Handles? Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. That's yeah. right. We spoke. Yeah, we spoke to you a couple months ago. He's Cause a good kid. You're a fucking valuable member of the Matriarch, and we love you. Yeah, dude, hell yeah. Have I'm you cracked gonna... anything open since the last time we spoke? Uh, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to say too much, but yeah, I'm. I'm you cleaned I'm, something I'm out. Doing well, since you guys talked yeah. last time, yeah. Real quick, cuz, because we know you got to get back to practice. What's been your favorite um episode or favorite moment of the podcast so far? So the you guys talking about Yanni P's uh, wedding was probably one of my favorite episodes. Ari Shafir was my previous one, but yeah, the whole shit you guys are talking about, like his, his brother shitting himself, like. <laughs> I'm going to be a groomsman at one of my buddy's weddings this summer, so I'm, yeah. I'm hoping shit like that happens there. Dude, it, it's not a wedding until you shit yourself, as Yanni P. said. Yeah. Now, since you've been listening to the episodes, do you feel more screwed in? Do you feel more Jewish as you're going out there in your day-to-day -day life? Do you feel more like a screwed-in kid? Oh, absolutely. I mean, dude, it's, it's Lent. I'm, I'm trying to save some money. I'm trying to, I'm trying to fast, so like, I'm... I'm screwed in all, all, always. Absolutely, cuz. Listen, for being a valid member of the Matriarch, we're going to send you a signed um, copy of the Torah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Leo, get back, hey, to, get back to coaching your team. Cuz, and you better keep that. giving us $25 a month. I'm going to send ice to your house. <laughs> yeah, but he called me right now. It's not like he's about to send it to my family for ransom. Yeah, cuz. We got you. All right, <laughs> Leo, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Leo Love Handles, love you, brother. Later. Yeah. He burnt. He burnt. You want to do one more? One more. Are we good? We got one more? We got the Girls Gotta Eat coming up. That's well, they're good. coming in. Yeah, they're coming in about 40 minutes. But yeah, I'm going to tease that to, to our people. That's going to be our new interview episode that's going up on the Patreon. Girls Gotta Eat. Girls Gotta Eat podcast. Because yeah. we got a lot of listeners now who listen from Girls Gotta Eat podcast who heard you on that yeah. on their podcast. Yeah, and make no mistake, both of those girls will get cracked open and cleaned out. Yeah. What are the chances of one of them, of the two of them, is not going to get Chrissy Deed? Yeah, it's just very low. Yeah, well, somebody's because you're always one of those girls is going to get my ear infection tonight. Yeah, it's what it is. Because you treat girls like Budweisers, and you crack them open, you clean, clean them, them out. out. <laughs> Mike emoji face. I mean, the fact that we can't eat food in this studio, yeah. is infuriating. Yeah, and cause it's funny that it's funny that we got a lot of fat kids that that occupy these studios, and none of them can eat in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's the real reason why Bobby yeah, has that rule. Bobby's trying to fast. He's just trying to control himself. I remember at one point, didn't Mike, I was here once when you were just like a fan and you weren't working for the shows yet. You brought him a black and white cookie and he ate it in studio, remember? Yeah, uh, No made the rule later on. Later on. Yeah, what, yeah. he was finding crumbs, you think? Mm -hmm. So it's not Bobby's rule. It's Gnome's rule. Gnome's rule. Yeah, no. Do, do you know exactly what the situation is? Does, you know what I think? You know what? You know what Gnome I think? Gnome just lets him do this up here? Well, let me just say real quick, yeah. give the answer quick, but I just I think the reason why Noam probably truthfully doesn't want crumbs on the floor is because when he's looking for his little bags of money sniffing the floor like a little Jew truffle pig, <laughs> if he picks up a crumb and thinks it's money, it just costs him more time. <laughs> Wei Zhang Ji. Oh, who do we got? Oh, my God. Thalia. How are you, babe? It's Chrissy D. Hi. I'm, I'm Chrissy. How are you? I'm coming up to, you know that I'm coming in May. I'm coming to your town in May to crack you open. I'm going. Oh, I'm going. great. Yeah, obviously, I was just kidding. I was just, but, yeah. Yeah, where, where's I, she again? I, I wouldn't push you off. But. Oh, oh, well, then uh, then I wasn't <laughs> kidding. I'm going to be staying at the Residence Inn. Yeah. Is this, where is this? Is this this, New, is, New this is from Portsmouth, uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. This is Talia Valkanos. Yeah, yeah, didn't we speak? She's, she's one of the funniest, she's one of our funniest values of the ma uh, members of the matriarchy. Maybe she's going to get drafted. She, you got to check tonight. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would fucking hope so. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. you doing, babe? Good. Uh, Giannis, I just want to say, Sonia Bluff. Oh. Congratulations on your wedding. Thank is you. That, 
you say Corona up a lot weddings, right? That's like a thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. Right. Congratulations. Yeah, I feel like yeah. You say it like always. Yeah. yeah. Babe, what are you doing today? Uh, well, I'm outside my office because if I was talking to you inside, I would get fired. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, make no mistake, before we're done, a few kids are going to lose their jobs for listening to our podcast in their cubicle. Babe, when I get up there, do you want to have, do you want to have breakfast at Friendly Toast? Oh my God, yes. That place is the best. Let's do it. It's fucking delicious. But no, for 100%, this draft is going to cause like somebody to lose their job. And yeah. like, yeah. It's just, it's just what it is. It's just what's going to happen. It's just, just KSOS. KSOS. Yeah, it's just KSOS. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. What has yeah. been your favorite moment of the podcast so far? Um, the really heavy history stuff. You like because, that like, the best? Yeah, because I'm really bad at history and like. This is all I know, which is embarrassing, but it's just... Okay. It's just... Yeah, so... I mean, but your... Uh, the interview with Nikki Glaser was really good, too. You like yeah. that, too? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Because it was, like... Because, like... Yeah, heavy history is good, but also, like, it's good for people to know, like, who you guys are a little bit beyond, like... Sure. Because that was, like, you know, it was kind of like a... It wasn't a heavy interview, but, like, kind of. Yeah, it, right. got, a, it got a little... There was... T- yeah. I saw one kid write that he... There was a lot of tension in the air. Did, did it feel tense to you, that interview? Oh, I didn't, I didn't think so. Yeah. If we start making some T-shirts, are you going to buy some? Mm, depends what they look like. Yeah. True. Dude, gotta, we got to get a cute little fit for you. Yeah. Yeah. Cute little yeah, sexy fit. Been, if we yeah. bought... If, 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 we, if we made one that said, it's what it is, or if we just made one that said, Ann Eileen, would you buy it? Uh, it's what it is, yeah, because that's not inappropriate. It's not going to get me fired. Good call. Okay. Could, yeah, yeah. So. Wei Shan Xian, you might buy. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would work. I would do that. Yeah. But it's got to be a it's cute little not, sexy like, fit. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be cute, and it can't be like over the top, like. Right. Yeah. So I can't just I can't just put a picture of the remote dick and make that a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. All right. <laughs> Well, listen, oh, babe, God. I just want to say thank you for being a valued member of the Matriarchy. I'm going to see you in May, and I'm just going to, listen, after the show, I'm just going to kiss you right on the lips. It's what it is. I mean, hey. Done. It's what it is. It's, it's what, what it is, is babe. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. I really, We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks. And if I'm not drafted first round, we're going to have Oh, uh, babe. Uh, babe, you don't even fucking worry about that, okay? Yeah. I, my you first know, round draft is all. Yeah, that's the thing. It's all pieces, and you're a piece. Yeah. Chrissy's t- Chrissy's team is good. <laughs> Chrissy's team is gonna look like a WNBA squad. Yeah. Make no yeah. mistake. <laughs> He's going all female. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. All right, babe. I'll talk yeah. to you later. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Yeah. Eventually, we'll just do like an all uh, female all star team, and then we'll just do all White Walkers. Yeah. <laughs> We got one more. That's it. That's it. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. Go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Be a part of the matriarchy. Uh, follow us on Instagram at History Hyenas. Go to our iTunes, History Hyenas Podcast. Rate us. Give us five stars and leave a review. And we'll send you a t shirt. Uh, we'll send you a, a signed um, t shirt, right? Yeah. Signed, signed mug, signed t shirt, everything. Something. And go to our YouTube and subscribe. Yeah, well, we'll pick one of the... Re- Not everybody writes a review. We're going to pick the best reviews, and we'll send them a T-shirt. Yeah. But we appreciate it, babes. Thank you.